First up, Dmitry Sempelovich. If I take out my phone and I drop it on the ground right now, it'll probably shatter into pieces. But if I had a phone that was made up of carbon nanotubes, you could drive your car over it and the phone would be just fine. Above all, nanotubes combine extremely high strength with high conductivity and light weight. Therefore, they can do something amazing. Unbreakable smartphones, impenetrable body armor, faster, lighter airplanes, and many other devices that require multifunctional materials are possible. In order to make devices out of nanotubes, we must first process them into fibers. Up to now, fibers made up of nanotubes haven't been able to deliver the combination of high strength and high conductivity that you would expect from a material that's made up of nanotubes. We are the first group to produce carbon nanotube fibers that are both highly conductive and strong. Army strong. <laughs> we process our nanotubes into fibers by dissolving nanotubes in uh, super acids and then spinning uh, fibers out of them with a solution process uh, that can spin miles and miles of fiber. The key step to getting uh, exceptional properties in our fibers has been the development of light microscopy and extensional rheology techniques that allow us to assess nanotube quality and length. Such length and quality are paramount for the producing and commercialization of superior fibers that can make nanotubes be all they can be. Angela Chimbalesi. Soon enough, we could very well see these carbon fibers replace the copper in everything, 
from your cell phones to the satellites to the power lines that carry electricity all over the world. Vida Jamali. Harvard nanotube fibers in strength to weight comparison are the strongest and steepest material known in the world. They can transform the aerospace science with their high thermal and electrical conductivity. They can alter dramatically the military with their low weight and high steepness. They can revolutionize the CAT scan imaging by making cold cavities, which can be used as a novel X-ray source. To make this happen, we need high-quality fibers. In other words, we need carbon nanotubes to be well aligned in the beginning solution that we make fibers out of. I model the droplets of highly aligned carbon nanotubes, which look like football. I theoretically model the size and shape of these droplets and see that they tend to have the shape of a fat football or elongated one and how well carbon nanotubes are aligned within these droplets with minimizing the elastic and surface free energy. Finally, I match my theoretical prediction of the shape and size of these droplets with our group macroscopic images. My models are a crucial step for improving fiber structure and guiding the production scale up of the revolutionary fibers. Suman Rutger. The world runs on energy. We use a lot of it to support our needs, from fueling our gas tanks to uh, charging our iPhones. But did you know that 85% of our energy comes from burning fossil fuels? And that however hard we try, we'll still be depending on fossil fuels to supply our needs at least for a few decades. One of the consequences of burning fossil fuels is climate change, and that will affect all of us through extreme climate events, and that will result in a lot of social and economic hardship. We work on a concept called carbon capture and storage which is one of the most promising solutions to prevent climate change. The concept of CCS, as it's called, is rather straightforward. You capture the demon, which in this case is carbon dioxide, and store it back to where it originally came from, depleted oil and gas fields. CCS is particularly viable at large sources of CO2 emissions, such as uh, coal and natural gas-fired power plants, which supply us electricity. However, before the CO2 can be stored, it must be separated from other gases which are present in the power plant exhaust. Unfortunately, this takes a lot of energy and therein lies the challenge. Our research challenges the long-standing notions about the energy sources for CO2 separation and even the chemicals that are used in it. The research that we are doing has invented new novel chemicals which will make CCS more efficient and help us design smaller and more energy efficient plants which will eventually reduce uh, energy costs by 40% and make CCL, uh, uh, help make CCS a global impact. Thank you. Jing Hui Wang. Each year in the United States, there are about 76 million cases of the football disease, including 5,000 deaths. However, the current method for the pathogen detections are either tedious time consuming or requiring the pretreatment. So we have developed a micro cantilever based system to rapidly and accurately detect one of the bacteria, Salmonella. A micro cantilever looks like a diving board on the scale of the micro. When the target is bent to the sensor surface, the stress change makes the cantilever bend upwards or downwards. Currently, our system successfully identifies not only Salmonella, but also Salmonella subtypes. And a new peptide has been discovered with even better performance than the commercially available antibody. In addition, the individual treatments of different cantilevers on the same sensor chip allow the simultaneous measurements of multiple salmonella binders. This highly increases the efficiency of our screening process. In summary, 
the micro cantilever based system provides a method for the rapid screening and detection, as well as a high potential to be further developed as a high throughput on-site detection technique for the general pathogens.